Do you remember we introduced, or at least we labeled this guy? This, of course, is a triangle. <laughs> a triangle. Yeah. Me, no shapes, okay? This is uh, a capital Greek letter delta, uh, and the delta stands for discriminant. So, in a quadratic function, This is how we calculate, evaluate what the discriminant is. And the discriminant is called the discriminant because it discriminates between the various kinds of quadratic functions. Um, if the discriminant's positive, what does that tell you about the quadratic? It's got two roots, very good. Or you could say it's got distinct real roots. Um, if the discriminant is exactly zero, what does that mean? One equal one root or, or two equal roots, okay? And if, on the other hand, the discriminant is negative, that means no roots. Okay. Now, <coughs> excuse me. We're interested in this because roots are very important to a quadratic, but roots aren't the only thing. And the discriminant can help us understand and classify quadratics even when you're not really thinking about the roots. And these classifications are what we've got up here. Okay. So what I want to help you understand is, let's draw some pictures underneath this. Can you draw for me? Uh, let me count them. One, two, three small sets of axes. Three small sets of axes, just beside each other is fine. We're not going to do, do any labeling here, we just want to get some pictures. <coughs> Excuse me. So, let's think about those situations for a minute. We'll do them in reverse order. If the discriminant is negative, you told me that means there's no roots, okay? So for instance, such a quadratic could look like this. That would have a discriminant that's negative. Or alternatively, it could maybe look like this. That would also have a negative discriminant. No roots, or no real roots anyway, okay? So this situation over here is discriminant less than zero. Now, what is it that makes a parabola the top one or the bottom one? Concave up or concave down? It's always about the A. The B and the C matter, but not in terms of de defining the concavity, right? Uh, we know what C does. All it does is move you up and down, right? The B, I'll let you, I'll let you fiddle in Desmos to experience this for yourself because it's much better. But the B sort of slides it around in a both horizontally and vertical way. But A is the only thing that tells you whether you're facing up or facing down, okay? So in this case up here, you've got a positive value for A concave up, whereas for this guy down here, you've got a negative value, okay? Now, let's look at the top one. If your discriminant is negative, you've got no roots. If A is positive, it's concave up. Every value that this quadratic function will give you, no matter what input you supply, every output will be a positive number. Do you agree? They're all above the axis, okay? So therefore, we call this guy a definite quadratic, and it's all positive, so it's positive definite. So let me write that down for you. This guy up here is called a positive definite quadratic, because every value, every output you'll get out of that will be definitely positive. And likewise, you can probably imagine, what's this guy going to be called? Not positive negative definite, but negative definite. Because no matter what x you put in, your y, your output, will be negative. So it's definitely negative, okay? Now, then what happens when you have a look at other values for your discriminant? So for example, I could say something like this, or something like this, right? So what value would you have for the discriminant in these cases? The discriminant wouldn't be negative, it would have to be positive to be one of these situations, okay? In this case, depending on what input you supply, you will have a different value for the output. It could be positive or it could be negative. It's not definite which sign you'll get because it changes. So therefore, instead of calling it this definite or that definite, we call it indefinite because it could be either. Indefinite. Now, I've got negative discriminant, positive discriminant. There's one last situation. A zero discriminant might look something like this. OK? 
okay? So this is discriminant equal to zero. You can see the one root, root that's there or the two equal roots. Now, how would you describe this? It's tempting to say the left-hand one is positive definite. It's tempting to call this positive definite because it certainly looks like it's all above the axis. Except for one teeny little problem. What's the teeny teeny little problem? It touches the axis. Oh, wrong color. It touches the axis right there. And zero is not positive, right? In the same way, this guy over here touches the axis and zero is not negative. So it's not positive definite because not every single value is positive. Even though it sort of looks more like this than like this, this really is also indefinite. So we could combine both of these together and say if the discriminant is greater than or equal to zero, you have an indefinite quadratic. You need a negative discriminant to definitely have all positives or all negative values. Okay?